Have you ever imagined traversing through the middle of the mighty Himalayas by train? Well, this seemingly crazy idea may soon become reality. Following recent discussions between the foreign ministers of China and Nepal to speed up feasibility assessments into a cross-border railway, China plans to dispatch surveyors to Nepal as soon as possible. Yes. China and Nepal is considering building a 540-kilometer railway through the Himalayas. As we all know, the world's longest railway tunnel, the Gothard Tunnel, is located in the central Swiss Alps, with a total length of 57 kilometers and took 11 years to build. So, how long will the Himalayas Tunnel take and how much will it cost? Although everything is an assumption at this stage, previous experience is that the cost of building a railway in an area with extremely harsh geological conditions is basically 100 million yuan per kilometer. As for the Himalayas Tunnel, at least 10 billion renminbi is needed. As for the construction period, subject to external conditions, it will take at least 10 years. On top of thorny enough obstacles like challenging topography and high altitudes, linking the two countries by railway requires tunneling through the Himalayas an unimaginably complex feat of engineering. The bulk of the railway within Nepal will pass along bridges or through tunnels, involving huge costs and formidable construction difficulties. That being said, the project is still well worth pursuing. Why? Okay, let's move on to today's topic. As a landlocked country, Nepal has long been impeded by transportation issues. The mountainous terrain hinders travel locally, which in turn has restricted the nation's economic and trade development. Completion of the China-Nepal Railway will connect three major cities in Nepal, making commuting much easier. Never again will Nepalese citizens have to choose between just cars and planes when going abroad. The designated section of this mammoth project within China's borders meanders across Tibet Autonomous Region. In the first half of 2022 alone, the region has received more than 17 million tourists. Assuming only one-tenth of these travelers visit Nepal by train via Tibet, Nepal's tourism industry would still enjoy an enormous boost. Railways will also reshape Nepal's dependence on India for maritime transport and thereby driving its foreign trade and socio-economic growth. Laos, another landlocked nation, repivoted its market structure upon securing a major transportation channel through the China-Laos railway project. Likewise, the China-Nepal Railway will no doubt fuel Nepal's national development and allow more of its citizens to enjoy the benefits of development. The China-Nepal Railway has been a long time in the making. However, progress has been slower than expected due to the project's sheer intricacy, compounded by the impact of COVID-19. China and Nepal have been close friends for generations. China has already assisted Nepal in building key infrastructure projects, most notably the Pakhra International Airport and Kathmandu Ring Road. During the pandemic, China was Nepal's largest supplier of medical aid and vaccines, while the zero-tariff treatment for 98% of the taxable items that China granted to Nepal has come into effect on September 1, 2022. The decision to further the China-Nepal railway falls aptly under the Belt and Road Framework. Projections by the World Bank suggest that if all transportation infrastructure construction under the Belt and Road Initiative is completed, we can expect $1.6 trillion in revenue to be generated annually by 2030, 90% of which will be shared by partner countries. Low- and lower-middle-income countries will be the greatest beneficiaries. However, boring through the Himalayas and building a tunnel is not an easy task. If the tunnel is built at an altitude of more than 7,000 meters above sea level in the Himalayas, the length can be shortened, but considering that the air is thin and the temperature is too low, it is not suitable for people and vehicles to pass, so it is best to reduce the height of the tunnel to less than 5,000 meters. At the same time, a major difficulty in engineering operations in the Alpine zone is lack of oxygen. When the Qinghai Tibet Railway was built and the altitude was raised to 4,500 meters, 140,000 people participated in the construction, and there were no cases of death due to alpine hypoxia, but more than 100 people died because of a tire burst. Under high altitude conditions, the pressure difference between the inside and outside of the car tire is too large. In order to get to know about the China-Nepal Railway, perhaps, the Qinghai Tibet Railway, the railway laid on top of the snow-capped mountains, will tell us some stories. 
Why don't we review the construction process of the Qinghai Tibet Railway and see how Chinese builders drill through the Kunlun Mountains step by step? Okay, please continue watching. The Qinghai Tibet Railway, with a total length of 1956 kilometers and an average altitude of more than 4,000 meters. It is the plateau railway with the highest altitude and the longest line in the world and was officially opened to traffic on July 1, 2006. In September 1958, the first phase of the Qinghai Tibet Railway project Xining to Galmud started construction. There was no capital and no technology. It was very difficult to build such a railway that was rejected by the world. Only through some precious old films can we see the hardships of road construction in those years. The road construction workers only had a thin coat to protect themselves in the heavy snow. Although the first phase of the project is only 814 kilometers, it took 28 years to complete the construction. So, we can tell that building railways above 3,000 meters was really not easy at that time. The first stage, which is relatively simple, is so laborious. How should the second stage with higher altitude and longer lines be constructed? On June 29, 2001, 17 years after the completion of the first phase of the Qinghai Tibet Railway, the second phase of the 1,142-kilometer project from Golmud to Lhasa was officially started. Golmud is an important demarcation point for entering Tibet. If you go south from Golmud, you must first enter the Kunlun Mountains. The most notable feature of the Kunlun Mountains is that they are high, with an altitude of more than 4,000 meters. The oxygen content here is only 50% of that in the plains. The lowest temperature can reach minus 30 degrees Celsius, and the living conditions are extremely harsh. Here, a 1,686-meter-long Kunlun Mountain Tunnel is to be built, that is to say, the Kunlun Mountain must be cut through. The Kunlun Mountain Tunnel is destined to become the longest plateau permafrost tunnel in the world. However, compared to the altitude of 4,648 meters above sea level, construction difficulty is not the most important problem. Anyone who has been to the plateau knows that when the human body enters a plateau above 3,000 meters above sea level and is exposed to a low pressure and low oxygen environment, various discomforts may occur, which are collectively referred to as altitude sickness. Among them, high-altitude pulmonary edema and high-altitude cerebral edema are the most dangerous and even fatal. It is very difficult for ordinary people to live in such a high latitude, and construction workers have to do heavy physical labor here. The road construction workers at that time needed to carry 5 kilograms of oxygen cylinders on their backs, inhaling oxygen while working. They were actually building railways with their lives. Do you think this is the most dangerous construction site in the world? Well, now that we understand the difficulty of building a railway tunnel inside the Kunlun Mountains, we may understand how crazy the China-Nepal railway plan is. Tangible progress is now being made in the development of the China-Nepal railway and the latest testament to the friendship between the two countries. This ingenious feat of human engineering will shine in the Himalayas as a beacon of common prosperity and community with a shared future. Well, thanks for listening. If you have any suggestions, just leave them in the comments section. We'll come back as soon as possible and check them. See you next time.